Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Fractured Sky by IV Studio. This is a one to five player game, takes roughly 45 to 90 minutes to play, and is for ages 14 and up. And in the game, Fractured Sky, you are attempting to gather star falls. The game goes through five rounds where you're gonna be playing skimmers and starships, as well as markets and towers all across this game board here. There are different locations in each of the portions of the game board. We'll be placing down your buildings, skimmers, and airships, to try and qualify for yourself to win, hopefully, one of these guys here. However, you can also gain resources. You'll use your resources to buy more things, to place more down, uh, to hopefully acquire more of these starfalls, and at the end of five rounds, if you have the most, you're the winner. Pretty simple, straightforward game with some unique little concepts. Let's talk about the setup, the basics of how to play, and of course, my review. To set up the game, the first thing you do is decide the number of players you're playing with and set the board accordingly. One side is the one to three player version and the other side is the four to five variant. I've got the three player variant set aside here. Then you're gonna take all the decks and separate any of the cards you might need to separate. In this case, because I'm playing with a two or three, three player game, basically I'm going to take out the Conquered Cold card, Forest's Fate, uh, Covert Coalition, uh, Wayward Wood, etc., etc. It tells you in the rulebook which ones to get rid of. Just take those cards out of the deck and set them aside. You will not be using them for this game. Give each player uh, some player aids, player references, and then set out the main other portion of the game board. This is the track that keeps um, uh, control of like what different objectives you'll have, as well as what locations will hold these wonderful little star falls. Once you have that board, then you're going to take the yellow deck or orange deck, shuffle it up, and take five cards and place them face down in the top portion of it. Then take your blue deck and shuffle it up and deal one card face down in the bottom left hand corner of the, this little board here. The other thing you'll do is you'll take one card from the blue deck and flip it face up. That's the open objective and take one of these uh, star falls here and place it on the location. This one says sinister spires. So I placed a star fall on sinister spires for the public objective. Each player is going to get a player board. The player board is going to come with a bunch of these little cubes, which you'll be using throughout the game. Just set them somewhere in the bottom rung here. Each player is also going to get a, a detailed, uh, specific resource generator here for gold, stone, and wood. You get four resources of your choice, but the game recommends you start with two gold and two wood, and you can move your markers accordingly. Additionally, you'll have these starships here. Go ahead and place them in the top three rungs. Then you're going to go ahead and have skimmers, place them in the top row. Finally, you're going to, next you're going to have these buildings here. These are called fortresses, and you'll set them in the next row. And then the last row is going to be markets. The only thing else is that you have to obviously make your board so that it has this little hidden sheet here so that nobody else can see it. But additionally, you're going to have these 12 little markers here that go from zero to 10. These are like your power markers and what you're gonna use for combat. They're also magnified. So you're gonna be, when you place them, you'll place them so that nobody can see what they look like on your specific starships. Hide those from you so that no players can see them. Okay, so you've got your board, you've got your main game boards and your objectives as well as your hidden objective and of course you've placed your starfall here. Uh, other than that, you're gonna go ahead and set aside anything else that you do not need from the game or move them and place the starfalls within reach of all players. Decide a player order and place the markers accordingly from first, second to third place in the bottom left hand corner and the game is set up. Fractured Sky is played in rounds. When a round is finished, you'll do a cleanup and you'll start the next round. And you'll do this five times. And at the end of the fifth round, whoever has the most star falls is the winner. On a round, each player is gonna take a turn up until they place their last airship. Once they do that, they're going to be done and they're going to pass until everybody else has completed all the actions to the point where now they can only play their last airship. Uh, there are a variety of actions you can take in the game. Most of them require an action and one is free. The first thing you can do is you can place an airship on any one of the main airship locations on the game board. These are the big circular areas. When you do that, you'll take one of your airships, you'll place it on the location above, uh, right below the name of the location, and you're going to gain a card. The card is gonna be a blue card from the blue deck so that uh, you can determine what is not going to be the, uh, one of the objective locations for the round. So if I draw this carrying cliffs, I know that this location is not going to be uh, where the hidden objective is. And this card can just be set with me for the rest of the round. 
Um, additionally, when you place out one of these ships here, you need to make sure that you choose a power. You can take any number that you want from your hidden screen area, and you can place it so that no one else can see it on the bottom of your ship. This is the power for that location, meaning whoever has the most power at the end of the round for the location will gain the victory of that location. You'll like control the area, which could involve you gaining star falls, could involve you getting resources, etc. You may only ever have a total with all three of your airships combined of 10 power. There are two unique chips that are white. There is a one and there is a 10. Obviously you may only play one of these. One of them is kind of a bluff um, and the other is a very powerful chip that will guarantee you the victory. After you've placed your airship, you're going to be done and you'll pass your turn and the next player will take their turn and take their action and it'll continue going like that. And once it gets back to my turn, I can now take another action. And the other action I could do is I could place out one of these, uh, they're called skimmers. Skimmers have a cost. It's one wood and a stone. Whenever you purchase something like a skimmer or a building, you have to pay for it in your resource area here. I would pay a wood, I would pay a stone, and I would take this and place it down on a location that I want. The location I place it on is going to be gaining plus one to my overall power for that round. So if I place a four under this ship here and I place a uh, skimmer right at that location, I'll get four plus one for my total power of the peaceful planes. Another action I can take is I can build a fortress or a market. Building a fortress does the same thing as a skimmer, but they stay throughout the game. You must place them in one of these little, um, little uh, one, two, three, four, six sided like hexagon spaces. And these spaces will represent multiple different locations, up to three of them, but some of them are only two. If I place this one here, I would get Peaceful Plains and Torrential Tropics. It's going to cost me three stone, but it's going to give me plus one power for the rest of the game for these two areas, as long as I've got a starship there, or a spaceship, um, in order to try and control that area. The other option is a market. If I place a market down, it'll be in the same location as I would place one of my uh, fortresses. They are going to give me a plus one resource to each location that I have an adjacent ship. Uh, that ship has to be one of your airships. And um, if I take like peaceful planes, let's say I get a gold and a wood and I also have a market, I can get another gold and another, uh, another gold or wood with one market. And markets stack. So if I have four markets for the peaceful planes, I would get the two basic resources and then I could choose between uh, wood and gold four times. That's how powerful these guys are. It's recommended that you always build a market at least the first or second round of the game. Those are the main actions that you're gonna be doing, which is either building or placing an airship, but there is another. You can scout a starfall location or peek at an objective. Scouting a starfall location uh, is going to cost you two gold. You'll spend the two gold. You'll look at the secret location here, which is gonna be where the objective is. Oh, look, the dreadful desert is where a starfall is going to be. I'll know this, I'll put this down here, and then um, I'll place a cube in one of the areas, either the top area for no resources or the bottom for, for a specific one of that location. But when you do that, it has to be a resource that location has. So if I spent the gold, now I know it's the desert. Uh, the desert has a gold. I must place it on gold, which will give information to players, uh, but it'll also give me one of my resources back that I spent in order to look at the card. I can also choose to give no information, placing it in the top area, and then just simply place the objective back. Uh, the other option is I can go ahead and peek at an objective. There are five objectives, one for every round. Each objective will score you a bonus point. When you reveal it, whoever has whatever the objective is the most of, or being in a location that they're the least of, basically I can spend two resources, I'll take the objective, I'll take a peek at it, I will place my cube to identify that I looked at it, and then I'll read it. Okay, have the fewest fortresses built at the end of the first round. So as long as I don't build a fortress, I can score this as points, and ties are played out in turn order. This will then go back face down. This game is not a memory game. As long as you have a token in the area of these cards, you can take a peek at them, or if you've previously looked at them throughout the round, you can take a peek of them. The last action is a free action. This is the ability for you uh, to basically spend resources to gain a different resource. You can take any two of your resources for one resource of a different type. I can spend two gold for a stone or two wood for a gold, etc., etc. So I take my action, 
I pass, the next player takes their action. They'll go ahead and select one of their airships. They'll take a marker. They'll place it on the location. They'll look at a card that isn't the objective area and they'll pass. I'll go ahead and spend my gold and my two wood, which will let me build a market. I'll place it in one of the market spaces and so on and so forth. Up until the point where everybody has placed out all their airships. The first player to place out all their airships is going to get to decide their order of play. They can choose first, second, or third. And if they choose third place, they'll get a free gold. I'll choose first place as green, thusly, then it will be purple, and purple will place out their last one, and thusly they'll choose third place. That will they will get a gold. And since there's no other player playing the game, um, usually you'd play in a two-player game with a bot, so the bot would go second, they would get a special resource, they'd get a gold. And then you'll go ahead and do the end game collapse. You'll basically go ahead and flip over the hidden objective, you'll place a starfall on that location, and you will conclude the locations. Each location will give you resources depending on your power level, whoever has the highest gets the most, and it goes from there, so it's starfall, both resources, only one resource, and then nada. And you also check markets to make sure you get resources for any adjacent ships that are in the areas that it is connected to with all those little lines. You also flip over the objective and you'll read it and whoever has completed it is going to score a starfall as a victory point, basically. And then you'll clean up. You'll take all of your ships back. You will place all of your tokens back underneath your screen here. You should have hopefully no starfalls left, but if there are some, they'll stay on the board if no one has completed that. Return your skimmers and then leave your buildings. Your buildings will always stay on the game board from round to round. You'll take all of your blue cards and you'll reshuffle them, even the ones that you have in front of you. And then you'll deal out for the next round two objective locations. So as the rounds continue from first, second, third, fourth, you'll increase the number of locations that are gonna have star falls. You're also always gonna have a public location so that everybody knows where one is. And you're never going to go back as far as the main objectives, these little uh, orange cards. You'll just go from one, two, three, four, five, which also denotes the round of play. And that's basically the idea of the game. From each round, you'll just incur new specific locations that have star falls. You're going to place your ships out, you're going to place out your buildings and skimmers, and you're going to check to see, after everybody has finished their turns and rounds, uh, what locations power each person has. So as a quick example, if I had a ship that had four underneath it, that would be four power. And then if I had a skimmer, that would be five. And if I had a fortress, that would be six. And if my opponent just had one airship and that airship happened to have a 10, they would have more power than me and they would win. And it's basic, simple, uncomplicated math as far as that goes. Play throughout all five rounds with the fifth round being the most likely to score you the most points with five different locations plus a bonus open one plus the objective when you reveal at the end of the game. And whoever has the most of these handy dandy little star falls here is the winner of the game Fractured Sky. Fractured Sky is an area control game with hidden bluffing elements. You are basically trying to control the areas in the game that are going to have those hidden star falls. Star falls are victory points and whoever has the most is the winner. So your objective is to figure out the locations based on where your opponents play, based on looking or peeking at these cards here, while spending as little resources as you need for information and as much as you can for your buildings. There's limited spaces on the board and some spaces are definitely better than others. Like for instance, this space here in the middle has a connection of up to four different locations, whereas one over here on the side only has two. Um, and you're basically trying to gather as much value as you can from round to round. And as the rounds increase, so does the victory points that you can obtain. I love the idea of having these little magnif magnetized little tokens that you're going to be able to add to your ship and they simply connect really nice and easily and they also hide their value, but they have kind of an edge of color, which is gonna have black or white. White being it could either be a 10 or a one and black meaning it could be anywhere between a zero and a nine. So there's a large differentiation between all these chips and what locations you want to go for. Obviously, some players will have more information than others as the game goes on, and you want to utilize that information as best as possible. When playing a two-player game, there's a bot involved, there's bot tokens. I simply like to use just another player uh, as far as their ships go and whatnot, as opposed to just the basic tokens. It feels better, but you can kind of choose to use them how you want. And bots have their own basic function with a deck where they flip over a card, 
and then you just do what the card says. And whether the card says whether it gives them a point or places a ship down, it kind of just changes the game up a little bit. It functions a lot like Jamie Stigmeyer games, Stonemeyer games, the, the automata system, um, and that's fine and all. This game definitely plays best at four and five players. More is always better for these type of games as far as area control goes, get player information, and unique combat sequence. Uh, having just one player to go back and forth with was, it was light, it was fine. I didn't really much care for the AI, and I generally don't for these type of games. But at four and five players, the game is really fun. I really enjoyed being able to try and control the different areas. I love the quality of the components and the little chips you hide under the, the board here. It's a very simple, straightforward game. There's nothing too, like, overly intense or complicated about it. It ramps up from round to round, and you're utilizing cool components as you do so. Uh, this is a game that is all about bluffing, gaining information, and utilizing your resources as best as you possibly can on the game board and watching your opponents make their moves. Uh, if you're playing a four to five player game, obviously it gets more intense and that's how I like it with these area control type of games. And there's a ton of more components that are gonna be on the game board and players making a ton of more interactions, which then causes the game to go a little longer. When it says 40 to 90 minutes, it's probably about right. But for your first gameplay, it's gonna be an extra 30, 40 minutes. That's just usually how it is with these type of games. If you like an area control game that involves airships and skimmers and all types of little buildings, but also a very simplistic game of just making one of very few actions, either placing out a ship, placing out a building, or looking at information, then this is gonna be the game for you. It's high quality components, beautiful artwork, and very straightforward. Combat is also very simple math, and you calculate each area individually as you go on from the game. Yeah, I really like Fractured Sky. I probably wouldn't ever play this game three or less players again, but at four and five, it shines, it's fun, and it does its job very, very well. Overall, it's a solid game. I highly recommend it at four and five players if you like area control based games and this theme really resonates with you. I used a hundred dollar word there. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review for the game Fractured Sky by Ivy Studio. If you're interested in picking up, there's a link down below in the description. Or, or is it for Studio? I'm not sure. Well, you decide. You can also go into our live streams every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST. We're playing games just like this one. Uh, we play games with the top down and then front facing camera so you can see all the components and how it works, which maybe will help you determine if it's a game for you more than just watching you, watching me tell you whether it's something you like. You can kind of include that in. Uh, we also have it, of course, on YouTube. You can watch it even afterwards or just bits and pieces just to understand how gameplay works. And of course, if you like our, our our streams on Sunday at 6.30. You can also watch our whatnot, which happens on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. PST. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to fracturing the sky with you next time.